want to talk to you about is um, the work that you're doing here in Guatemala and how you're giving back to the community because I was I was really excited about the foundation you work with and I'd like you to share us, with us a little bit about CCAP. Okay, well I um, am on the board of directors of a United States based uh, nonprofit called Amigos de Santa Cruz Foundation that's based out of Washington State. And um, <clears throat> I've been on that board of directors for about eight years and uh, we I really enjoy uh, interacting with just the, the whole community at large, not just the foreign community. And um, I have forged a lot of friendships, I think, with people here. Um, even though I have pretty bad Spanish. <laughs> They're very <laughs> forgiving of my Spanish. And um, so I was on the board of directors and part of our program about five years ago, we, we built and uh, raised money for and built a vocational center that we called CCAP, Centro de Capacitacion. And it is um, a vocational center to train people in our uh, community at large in different skills um, that they can use to earn money. Uh, traditionally, this community has been a subsistence farming community, some fishermen, um, others have serviced, uh, being car caretakers or guardians of houses of the foreigners. But the economy has been very low, and so part of our efforts are to improve the economy of this area by teaching different skills and then providing work for those skills through um, our CCAP Center. I work in the Artisania program, and um, we have developed products that um, our graduates can sell either on their own, they could set up a store, we're providing um, small business classes for them to run their own business if that's what they would like to do. But also part of my job is to get small wholesale orders for our graduates that they we then pay them money to make the products of these small orders. And, um, you know, it, because we've only been in um, operation about four, year, four years now, now we're just getting graduates who have some really, really good skills that we can go out and get them jobs, and, um, and it's working. It's improving the economy of the fa individual families who are participating in this program, and uh, just giving them economic stability and sustainability. Okay, so I want to just cover a little bit about the cost of living. Um, the weather here is awesome. And is. so how does that affect your cost of living in, is in utilities? Well, because the climate here is just, it's, uh, called the land of eternal spring here in the Guatemalan highlands. And uh, it gets down to maybe the low 50s at night and in the uh, daytime at the warmest it would be maybe 85 at the very warmest usually mm -hmm. low 80s in the day um, and you have rainy season and non rainy season but other than that the climate's pretty consistent year-round so you know you have basic electricity but you don't have heating you don't have air conditioning you don't need those things mm -hmm. um, uh, other utilities, uh, it just kind of depends on what you're comfortable getting. The internet is very easy to obtain through various different kinds of uh, companies. Um, and you can pay, you pay by usage or you can pay by the month depending on what you need. You can also get TV, so, you know, those are just... Some of the, all of those things are available if you want it. And what about health care? Have you experienced the health care here in Guatemala? You know, I have. And my husband fell and broke his wrist. And we went to the uh, local hospital. And they said it. And it was just fine. It happened to be kind of an emergency situation on a holiday weekend. So then the next week, we called the U.S. Embassy, found a doctor in Guatemala City that we went to, and he, he, was, he checked it out. He said, oh, this is just fine. You know, we'll just keep an eye on it. He, so everything worked out really well. 
Um, we get dental care, all of our dental care here, done here, and we have for quite a while. And um, we found that a lot of the uh, dentists are trained in the United States and they have um, very good facilities. Um, the doctors in Guatemala City, a lot of them have been trained in the United States um, or uh, other first world countries. Uh, most they speak English. Um, and for the most part, I feel like they're, the quality of care through them is very good. I've had friends who've had serious issues, one with cancer, one with um, other, another problem, and um, they were both treated at Guatemala hospitals and have nothing but good things to say about their treatment. You can get insurance um, here in, in Guatemala. Um, Sometimes the insurance is through, you can contract with a hospital mm -hmm. to get insurance through them and allows you access to all of the doctors within their uh, hospital. Mm -hmm. um, or you, you pay out of pocket. You have public hospitals and you have private hospitals. Public hospitals are very, very minimal. They're uh, more for the general public. But if you went to a private hospital, that's where you would get a lot better care. Um, but even at that, your expenses would be probably 15 to 25 percent of the cost of what it would cost uh, in the United States. I can get my teeth cleaned for $15. Wow. Okay. And it's done by the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> Not as assistant. Not as assistant. No. I have been here in Guatemala about 14 years, off and on, and. It's been very, very stable between uh, the Quetzal and the dollar, uh, ranging from about, I think, 7.5 Quetzals to 8 Quetzals per dollar. Mm -hmm. And um, that stability, I think, is really important. How have you found your family and friends to respond to your living outside the country? Well, I think a lot of times when we go back home, we our enthusiasm for Guatemala and the culture here is infectious. And quite a few of our friends have come and family have come to visit us and have really understood what it's all about for us. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that there are some misconceptions out there about Guatemala and Central America in general and its safety. Um, and I think a lot of it is, you know, very unfounded. Um, no, I think no matter where you are in the world, in the United States or Guatemala or anywhere, you have to be conscientious and, and observant of where you are and when you are there. Like you wouldn't go into an unsafe area of town in New York City late at night. So you, you wouldn't do the same in Guatemala City either. Mm -hmm. So, um, and a lot of, I think, the uh, misconceptions about the way Guatemala and Central America are now are based on um, what it used to be like. It did used to be uh, unstable here um, when we had the Civil War, but that's long past and um, it's uh, as safe as any place. I, I feel very safe here. Mm -hmm. I have two since I got here. <laughs> I love it here. It's going to be really hard to go home. <laughs> well, I really appreciate you taking all the time today to talk about your passion for Guatemala. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. Uh, yes, I love it. and um, we'll be sure to see you on the blog. Okay. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.